I am sarcastic by nature. That's how I'm wired. I think it's a fantastic way to go through life. Laugh at yourself, your surroundings. Not everybody's on board with that. I live in New York now. You think New York would embrace sarcasm? Not always the case. I once went to a dinner function. I had to bring a bottle of wine. I was in the wine store. I couldn't read the label very well. So out of complete curiosity, I said, excuse me, ma'am, what year is this? And she said, the wine. No, man. I am a time traveler. I am only here to beg you, please. Don't break up with your boyfriend. Or I'll never be born. I was reading this thing in the news several months ago, and it was, uh, this is a news story talking about the existence of atheist megachurches. I mean, what do you do there? Do you sing worship songs at an atheist church? What do you say? Like, shout to the void, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to nothing. What do you sing to? Man, do they have children's church at the atheist mega church? <laughs> what songs do you sing to kids at an atheist church? Like, no one loves the little children, all the children of the world. No one hears you when you cry, no one hears your lullaby. No one loves the little children of the world. Reason why, reason why we exist, but there's no reason why. Reason why, reason why we exist, but there's no reason why. A row, row, row your boat gently down the reef Wallowing, 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 wallowing in your unbelief Let's do the rounds. Remember the rounds? I'll s no, you don't want to do that. Okay. Let's try a new one. Evolution, this I know For Charles Darwin told me so Accidentally alive if you're weak, you won't survive. <laughs> That's the logic, right? That's what they're saying. I am an A. I am an A-T. I am an A-T-H-E-I-S-T. -E and I have N-O-T-H-I-N-G to give me hope and certainty. And when I D-I-E, I will be A-L-O-N-E. Hey! to being weird. I'll admit to being weird. But I was wondering, did ever any of you normal people wonder what a weird person thinks is weird? I mean, if I'm it for you, what's it for me? If you come to me for yours, where do I go for mine? If I'm the bottom line where you're concerned, what's the bottom line where I'm concerned? Sir, you're sitting down there, you're a well-dressed individual with a great big white flower right on your lapel. I want you to know that you look like a normal, fine individual to me, and I want to know, did you ever wonder? What well, somebody like me thinks is weird. Did you ever wonder that? Well, I'm going to tell you. I think it's weird when you're sitting in church and three pews behind you, somebody goes, <laughs> I always think to myself, what are they going to do with that now? Oh, <laughs> I see what I'm scratching their ear, you know? That ain't too weird, but when they look at their finger, man, that is weird. And why do they always want to show that to you? Look. No, I don't want to look. Praise God. Or somebody take out their handkerchief and blow their nose. Then they look at that. What kind of wisdom are they trying to find in there? It must be pretty good, because then they fold it up and keep it, man. Yeah, I think I'll hang on to that till Jesus comes, you know? <laughs> I don't even believe I say some of this stuff, you know what? But I'll tell you, man, I travel 385,000 air miles a year. I got so many frequent flyer points, I got an upgrade on the space shuttle, you know what I'm saying?
And, and they say things on the airplane that's supposed to make you feel better, like fasten your seatbelt in case we have an accident. <laughs> well, I know if we're falling out of the sky from 35,000 feet at a 70 degree angle heading straight for the ground and I know we're not gonna miss, <laughs> it's gonna make me feel a lot better to know that I got my seatbelt on. <laughs> hey, nothing to worry about. I'm strapped into this wreckage. I'm just sitting there sipping my coke. The guy next to me's going crazy. Aren't you afraid? Why, well, no, ma'am. I have my seatbelt on. <laughs> and have you ever heard? <laughs> have you ever heard this one? Well, the cabin has been pressurized for your comfort. In the unlikely event that we should lose cabin pressure, a compartment directly above your head will open, and an oxygen mask will fall from the ceiling. If this should occur, please extinguish your smoking material, reach up and grasp a mask, pull it to the full extent of the plastic tubing, which will start the individual oxygen flow. Then place the gold cup over your nose and mouth, adjust the elastic band to fit your head, and breathe normally. <laughs> Fat chance! You're falling out of the sky from, from 35,000 feet. You're at a 70 degree angle. You're headed straight for terra firma. Now some mercy comes into the situation. The air gets sucked out of the airplane, and you got a chance to pass out before you hit the ground. But the airline wants you to get everything you paid for. So they save your life. This little panel opens up, this little mask falls down, but because you're at a 70 degree angle, it doesn't fall straight down in front of you, it falls out here somewhere. And you can't reach it because you got your seatbelt on. In the old Superman films, when Superman came, there was always this one guy who was like, is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's Superman. And that always happened. <laughs> like that. So I started to think that how often was the same guy like, is it a bird? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because that had to happen. <laughs> and actually, I think that had to happen like way more. Because <laughs> there's so many birds and, and so few supermen. <laughs> so statistically, it's gonna be a bird. <laughs> Almost every time. <laughs> so he's pointing a lot. And I don't get, how can the guy, how can he not even tell the difference between, between a bird and a plane? <laughs> I think I have never made that mistake. <laughs> Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, just concentrate a little bit. <laughs> maybe have another look. <laughs> Is it a kite? Is it a helicopter? Well, how bad is your eyesight? <laughs> Perhaps you are not the person who should be pointing things out in the first place. I, I, I hope that guy never goes hunting. <laughs> is it a bird? No, it's me. <laughs> my, daughter is, my daughter is 15. She's beautiful. Straight A student made varsity cheerleader as a sophomore. And the boys are knocking at the door now. What's the right age to let her die? To date, let her date. 16, no, I don't like you. I need a dad, dad, what's the right age to let my daughter date? There's not, yeah, that's a good answer. There's not in the right age. I told her 33. That Jesus never went on a date. If you outlive the Lord. <laughs> my dad was a preacher, and I found out at 12 years old it didn't pay to be funny. My, my dad would go from church to church preaching. And I always take one of us kids with him. And I'm sitting in the front row of this big church, 500 people on a Sunday morning. And before my dad starts to preach, he surprises me. Mijo, stand up and tell the church something about yourself. I'm 12. I'm scared. 
I got a good life. I live at home with my mom and dad. What, is, what am I going to testify about? But I stood up and my sense of humor kicked in. <laughs> and I faced the congregation and said, my name is Dennis and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Oops, wrong group. <laughs> it's a good joke for the dry bar. <laughs> well, I used to get whoopings when I was a kid, but I deserved it. You know, my wife and I, we don't spank our kids. We uh, use a taser. It's totally different. It's, yeah, don't you judge. How dare you judge? That's an awesome piece of work right there. It's gotta be from God, it's so good. It's quiet, doesn't leave a mark, they don't remember. Come on, people. <laughs> it's awesome. I call it the whatever gun. Whatever, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Yeah, we used to get women, my mom, and I deserved them, but just, here's the deal. My mom didn't care what she spanked you with. She'd just grab whatever's closest and start swinging. Never get in trouble in the kitchen. That's one thing you need to remember. I got spanked with a cheese grater one time. That's a surreal experience. The leg shavings flying up all over the kitchen. <laughs> one time I got spanked for something I didn't do. You think she apologized? Like that's for something you'll do later. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. So you're saying I have a spank account? Okay. Think you're writing checks my butt can't cash, hoss. <laughs> have any uh, worship pastors here tonight that do a lot of the worship music or the modern worship stuff? I think that's great. I just have a few requests for you. And I think I'm speaking for a lot of people here tonight. We're just trying to help, okay? I have three requests, uh, worship pastor. Uh, first request is, it's Sunday morning. It's really early. A lot of us have not had breakfast. Can you one time in our life pick a song with a key we can sing in just one time? Something that a normal human can latch on to, Chris Tomlin. Can you do that, please? I'm not Barry White. I'm not a BG. Can you pick something in the middle? I can't. I, I'm going to faint right now. Request number two, I like the modern worship songs, but can we mix in a few more hymns? Because at least with hymns, you know when the song is over. <laughs> oh, you used to be able to plan your day around a hymns, like first, second, fourth, first, go home. You know what I'm saying? Some worship songs, you don't know when they're going to end. It's a good thing you have a chair in front of you for support. Like, I could sing of your love forever. I could sing 10 minutes later. I could sing. Are we going to sing of his love really forever? I mean, I love Jesus. We got to go. I got things to do. Lord, I'm just going to lay here prostrate before a prostrate. Prost. Prostrate. Is it prostate or prostrate? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That R is so important. <laughs> oh, don't you judge me. You know some of you done that. Sing at the top of your lungs. Let angels prostate fall. <laughs> God's going, that ain't how it goes, Brother Tim. What are you singing to me? Angels, come here. They're singing about your prostate. Get over here. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Should have wore a belt. <laughs> Request number three, worship pastor. You wonder why sometimes men don't sing a lot in church. I think I know why. A lot of new songs are written with a female's way of, of expressing love, and men and women express love differently. 
you know, and, and men, we just don't know how to get into it as much, you know, because it's all, you know, like, I want to see your face. I want to touch your face. I want to get to know you. We're like, I don't know what to do. I, I mean, I love him. I don't want to touch his face. That's creepy. And that's fine. Just write a few songs that men can worship to, you know? Watch the game with me, Lord. Just sit here in silence. No talking or questions. And fall asleep halfway through. Guys would be going, that is so anointed. Oh my gosh. Love doing comedy. I was doing a show at uh, Hermosa Beach at the County Magic Club, right? So, I, so I, leave, I leave and I'm walking to my car and it's getting a little cold, a little dark outside. So I'm thinking, let me hurry up to get to where I need to be. So I start jogging. <laughs> then this white lady with her little jogging outfit on came around the corner about 20 feet in front of me. We jogging in the same direction now. <laughs> then she looked back. She started jogging faster. So I look back too. Now, I didn't see anything back there. If a white person's scared of it, Michael Jr. is scared of it too. So I started jogging faster. After she looked back again, she took off in full stride. This time, I didn't even look back. I also kicked in the gears. I could have easily passed her up. I'm thinking, no, I can't just lead this defenseless lady out here by herself. Whoever back there gonna get her. So I yelled up to her. Is that as fast as you can run? Over there, that's hilarious. Tropical smoothie. But uh, first off, um, I want to uh, recognize we do have, this is simulcast right now. There are just thousands of people watching this on the internet right now. Just want to say hi to you guys. And what uh, I, 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 And that's how I found Jesus. And uh, I just wanted to share that. I knew it was a powerful testimony to everyone here. Not here to be cool for my kids. You know how cool my kids think I am? You know what they call me at home? My nickname, Dr. No. Dr. No. You know why? Because I give them a lot of no. A lot of no. A lot of kids get too much yes. I give them no. I call it the gift of no. More parents should do that. Daddy, can I have that? Can I have the keys to the car? Let's see here. No. Can I go over there? Nope. Can I spend the night over there? Hmm, this old man, he said no. <laughs> Get creative. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, no. Now you're just somebody that I used to. No. <laughs> There's so many ways to say no. <laughs> I hear a lot of dumb things that people say. We, we overuse words in this country, don't we? Superlative words, we gotta stop using so much. Like, that's the best. Oh, that's the best. No, it's not. That's amazing. Mm -mm. That's unbelievable. We overuse that word, unbelievable, don't we? I was eating some deer sausage with my buddy. He's like, man, this deer sausage is unbelievable. <laughs> no, it's not. Just say it, it's just a good piece of deer sausage, man. It's not unbelievable. Now, if a bald eagle wearing a tuxedo flew down and dropped some deer sausage in your mouth, yeah, that's unbelievable right there. I'll give you that, that is unbelievable. Because that's a bald eagle wearing a tux dropping sausage in your mouth. You don't see something like that every day. 
Unless you're a Catholic, they see stuff like that all the time, but not a normal person. Everybody, ah! That's awesome, man. That's unbelievable right there. We overuse this phrase the most, that's the worst. You ever heard people say that? That's the worst. That's the worst. Really? That's the worst. That is the worst. My wife and I dropped our daughter off at the mall not too long ago. She was there to meet her friends, and her friends weren't there yet. My daughter was distraught. She was like, oh, my friends. My friends. That's not how she talks, but it's really funny. My friend, my friend. <laughs> my friends aren't here. My friends aren't here yet. Now I can't go shopping. I have to wait for them until I get here until I can't go shopping. And my wife was like, I know, honey. That's the worst. Really? That's the worst? Being stuck in the mountains or being lost, you know, out, out at sea with sharks circling around you. You're not in more of a pickle there. <laughs> That's the worst. Can you imagine like those Chilean miners? Remember those Chilean miners a few years ago got stuck in that mine for like 30 days? Do you think they're down that mine going, oh no. <laughs> this is no good right here, man. <laughs> We've been down in this mine for a long time, you know. We got no food to eat, we got no water to drink. <coughs> There's not a lot of air left to breathe. We may not live to see another day, my friend. This, this is the worst. The only thing. The only thing that I can think of right now. <laughs> You, let me finish, please. The only thing, this is bad right now, the only thing that I can think of right now that could possibly be worse than this is, you know, sometime when you're at the mall and your friends aren't there to meet you yet and you want to go shopping, but you can't, so you gotta wait around on the car for like 10 minutes or something. I tell you what, this is bad, my friend, but that, that is the worst right there, my friend. I tell you, that is the worst. But say we had one about Prince. He was an amazing, amazing uh, musician, amazing talent. And did you guys know that Prince started writing songs at a very early age? Did you know that? So right now, before I go, I want to play you this song. Okay. We have sign language people. That's awesome. <laughs> this guy's amazing. <laughs> no, this is me talking right now. This guy is amazing. <laughs> he is hot. <laughs> I mean, I thought David had a nice butt. This guy is rocking it. He's rocking and rolling it at the LU. I just farted. As a kid, growing up, we were poor. We weren't even poor, we were poor. We couldn't afford the other letters, man. We had no money. I was actually being sponsored by a family from Haiti. Yeah, that's a funny joke. <laughs> I see this lady over here struggling. She don't know if she should laugh or not. Like, hmm. <laughs> when you're poor, your creativity excels. Like it really, really excels. I remember I wanted an action figure when I was 10 years old. I wanted an action figure so bad. My birthday came along. My dad hands me a box. I open it up. It's empty. He said, it's invisible, man. I was like, that is awesome! I played with that thing for like three weeks, man. 
because my brother hid it from me. <laughs> Couldn't find it nowhere, man. I knew he took it. We played games. We just made up games. We played this one game called uh, Talk About You. The instructions were to just talk about you. That's all we did. We talked about each other. My friends would talk about me and be like, Michael Jr., you got some big feet. And I was good at this game. I was like, oh, yeah, well, you're so dark skinned. I bet if you ride a motorcycle, you get a ticket for tenant windows. <laughs> It's hilarious. White people are looking for black people to make sure they can laugh. It's just okay. Though. <laughs> I can, yeah. It's okay. You sure? No? Mm. We ain't had no money, man. We had a my parents would buy us some stuff, but they couldn't pay for everything. Like we had the game operation, right? We ain't had no batteries. Then my cousin came over and he figured out a way how to plug it into the wall, right? <laughs> it's a whole nother game now. Yeah. 